Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. As I make my way up the New England Highway, New South Wales, of course Tamworth is well known for its iconic golden country guitar. But there's a very cool motorcycle museum here as well, and you're about to see it on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Lots of country towns and inland cities around Australia are well worth a visit and Tamworth is high up on that list. Tamworth is a must see and a must do on your travel agenda. This administrative centre of the northwestern region of New South Wales, Australia is conveniently situated on the picturesque Peel River. Tamworth is the largest and most populated city in the northwestern region, playing host to over 42 and a half thousand residents, making it the second largest inland city in New South Wales. Tamworth is 318 kilometres from the Queensland border and is located almost midway between Brisbane and Sydney. The city is known as the first town of lights, being the first place in Australia to use electric street lights in 1888. Tamworth is also famous as the country music capital of Australia, and no bigger statement represents this than the golden country guitar standing proud every day of the year. While Peel Street greets you with bronze models to the likes of Slim and Joy Dusty, Smokey Dawson and many more. The War Memorial is also worth a look. And the Powerhouse Hotel also leads the way in smart luxury five star accommodation. Superb service and sophisticated opulent dining at the Workshop Kitchen and Coal Bunker Bar. And while you're there, the Powerhouse Motorcycle Museum is right next door for you to check out as well. When you visit Tamworth, this place is a must see. It also provides food and accommodation on the same property as well. Welcome to the Powerhouse Motorcycle Museum. This place is amazing. There are over 50 motorcycles here in pristine working order from the 50s, 60s, 70s and the 80s. There's brands here to suit all that choose to stay upright, comprising Ducati, Triumph, Honda and Velocet, just to name some. The Powerhouse Motorcycle Museum is definitely one of the most unique and of highest quality displays in Australia. We have to embrace this, and to tell us more, here's Frank. Fletcher, I'd like to welcome you to our uh, Shangri-La, our uh, powerhouse museum. Uh, it's been open now for something like 16 years, and uh, it houses 60 of what is a personal collection of over 200 bikes. The bikes in here are what you would uh, well, the strength of what is here is what Greg has done with these bikes, and that's to bring them back to that concourse or that as-new uh, look. And uh, if you threw a blanket over everything in, in this room, it would touch mainly baby boomers. There are the odd exception to that rule. Our oldest bike is a Harley, a 1924 J model that is, funnily enough, a posty bike camaraderie that exists um, with, the, uh, with the people who, who attend here is, is it's all a part of the biggest, well one of the biggest families in the world. It really is a love affair that brings people in through the doors here. They love what they see, they, uh, they uh, click back to uh, their youth, some of them, some of them they click back to what they've got. <laughs> And um, it really is a, uh, it's, a it's wonderful being here to be a part 
uh, of what it is that is happening because it's love and uh, love of, uh, of motorcycles that, uh, that is the, um, the catalyst for, uh, for what uh, has developed over the years. Tamworth, uh, from a historical point of view, um, was the first city ever to be lit by electricity. Uh, and um, Greg Maguire, the, the owner of the pub next door, actually built, he bought the land that the original powerhouse was situated upon. He built his hotel and later built this museum. Greg's a, a guy that has, well, he's collected motorbikes all of his life and um, 40 odd years. And uh, he has over 200 of them. There's 60 in here and the 60 that are in here are pristine. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I'd like everyone to, uh, to have a look at what we've got here and to visit us as well. And uh, it really is an experience and it's one that you, um, well, I, we, we get people here repeating the experience time and time again. And come and see us. Uh, we'll make you feel welcome and um, you won't be disappointed. Bikes have always been part of my life. So when it comes to insurance for a new bike or an older classic, Shannon's is my choice. They're one of Australia's leading motorcycle insurance providers. With flexible cover for bikes that are laid up while being restored or on club registration. And cover for your daily ride too. If you're passionate about your bike, insure it with Shannon's. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hair and Forbes has the range. Frank, I feel sorry for you, waking up every morning and having to come here to work. Oh, Fletch, it's really, really difficult, right? Yeah. It's really hard. Pretty tough, even getting a car park spot out yeah. the front's difficult as well, right? Yeah, true, true, that's yeah. true. Good on you, Frank. Without these volunteers, these places just wouldn't run, and you can't get better volunteers than guys that obviously, in this case, have ridden bikes. Uh, this is a, a beautiful place to come to work every day, mate. Uh, you alluded to one of the oldest bikes here. The latest acquisition is this Harley Davidson behind us, the, the postal bike. What a find. It's an absolute cracker. And if you look on the tank, you'll just see the remnants of the Royal Mail insignia. So that's how far back it, it goes. 1924. Now, I asked Frank if it started. Well, it hasn't started, but a couple of little telltale signs as to why the bike may have been parked up. We can, we can find a push rod to one side. Anything else? Well, it's only speculation on my part. And uh, looking at it, I, I figured that everything on the bike, except those two parts that, that were mentioned, will work but Greg has decided that shabby chic is uh, in vogue and he's not going to do it up which broke my heart but I've bounced that conjecture off so many people that have been in here and they all agree with him yep. shabby chic is in yeah I've got to say I don't think that you could restore this bike if you did it would have to be like well obviously it would look like brand new but I think to, to leave it with its mud on it how it was found in the shed parked up after 60 years and as you say that little uh, the uh, the Royal Mail emblem on the side of the tank that would disappear if you if you restored the bike I think its own characteristic as is that's uh, very special yeah it is it really is and it's it's a wonderful bike and you can tell that people just absolutely are mesmerized looking at it and uh, there wouldn't be too many of them left i wouldn't imagine because world war one caused so many of them to be taken to europe mm. ones that didn't come back mm. so I, I i can't see that there would be that many more left okay frank what's happening here uh this one as i just said uh, fletch is a 1972 uh, Kawasaki 750, an incredible bike, uh, and they had 
a heck of a lot of power. Power that, well, well, if you if you weren't aware that it was there, it, it could have been troublesome. You know, you, you'd be riding your bike and it'd go up through the power band and then go completely insane if you weren't down on your seat hanging on, you were in trouble. So well, these are the, the, the widow makers, they right? All them the widow makers, them and the five hundred. So the seven fifty, I don't know which one was the the worst, but anyway, they were both mentioned in that uh, context way back. The way these bikes have been restored, Frank, they look like brand new. Well, they do look like brand new, but they've been restored uh, to that concourse level. See, the, the whole idea of resurrecting a bike to that concourse standard, well, in theory, is to, is to strip your bike back to its last bolt and to rebuild it with a view of getting as close to brand new as you can get it. Now, these bikes really have had a resurrection and, uh, and, and, and they're appreciated because of that resurrection, you know, and especially these ones that were, had an air of excitement about them and th this, this 750 certainly did have. This is a Veloset. It uh, went to the Isle of Man in 1969. It's a Viper, a 350, and it's an absolute brute of a bike. It's a, it's a no guts, no glory bike, and I just love the look of it. I just think it's an absolute cracker of a bike. Plenty of shine, Frank. Plenty of bling going on. It certainly is. I'd, I'd hate to be paying to make one of those tanks. It's so <clears throat> period correct for the era too. I mean, even some uh, aircraft too with the polished alloy in that, that era as well. There's something about the style of that, the aesthetics of this bike. Yeah, no, certainly. There's plenty of, plenty of aesthetics there. And uh, as I said, no guts, no glory. It's just, it's just, a, just a muscle bike. Etched onto the engine uh, is the name Udall, and now Udall, I believe, was the uh, the chief engineer for Veloset. Uh, so in '69, this was Veloset's prime effort uh, into the Isle of Man, and it all, also went to Ulster as well, which was your Irish Grand Prix. So it it really has uh, accreditation this bike, and it's and it's lived a good life. Frank, I want to thank you for your your time this morning. Um, uh, Attributing to this part of the episode of Classic Restos here in Tamworth, um, I'm just so appreciative of you opening the doors and, um, and featuring today. Anytime. Anytime, Fletch. That's Thank good. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. You take care of yourself and stay upright. OK, will do. Well, there you have it. The bikes are amazing. When you come to Tamworth, you can't miss this. Also, accommodation and a lovely restaurant are on the same property as well. For more information, check out powerhousemotorcyclemuseum.com.au. How cool are the bikes at the Powerhouse Motorcycle Museum? Awesome place. How you doing, Jason? Good, Fletch. Self? Good, mate, good. Time for some hot rods. Now, on today's show, mate, beautiful 28 Ford here. Yes, it is. Ford A model, yep. Now, before we start talking about the car, just quickly, uh, the club. Tell us about your car club. Uh, Roadrunners, Rod and Custom in Tamworth. Um, I think it's the second oldest hot rod club, um, established in 1963. Um, I think at the moment, I think we have about 30, 35 members. Nothing too big, but nice and small that we all get along well together. How cool to think that the size of the country that Australia is, and you can come to a place like Tamworth and, and stumble across technically one of the oldest car clubs. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's really good, yeah. especially here. Yeah. My word, Jason, that must be great to be a part of. Now, a car such as this, uh, a model Ford, I like what you've done. You, you haven't chopped the cab. It's, it's got the original uh, height in the, in the turret. Uh, yeah, it has. And the reason I sort of wanted to stick with that way is, um, I guess, visually, it's easy. It looks good. It looks old, original. Engine up front, what are you doing there, Jason? Um, it's a, it was a stock 304 out of a um, HSV VN. Uh, now um, it's a 355 running a VT roller block, um, so stroked. Mm -hmm. And it's got a Harrop uh, single plane manifold on it. So roller cam, roller rockers, and a bit of a cam, and it's got a T5 five-speed manual gearbox. Jason, I love the interior, mate. There's just something about that simplistic look that's really nice. Yeah, it's all, all leather, um, beige leather, or tuck and roll. Um, so, yeah, trims, roof lining, seats. It, I just wanted that nice smell of luxury, yeah. basically, and, and I think leather does it nicely. How cool is that? What, what do you, when you look at the old movies or the old black and white footage and you see these cars, you know, back in the 20s and 30s, how does it make you feel when you, you look at them now and know that you've got that derivative? Um, good, I guess. You're sort of bringing a bit of history to the modern days, I guess. In terms of your build time, Jason, uh, where did you where did you start with the car? Uh, how was it when you first got a hold of it? 
Um, well, it's all reproduction. So basically the rails come from a, a company in uh, South Australia, Rodtech. Um, so basically just started with the rails, um, built, built the chassis, sent it through on myself. Um, they supply all the four bars. Um, Bonnet is all original press stamp from the States. Um, I think the pickup bed's all steel. It was from a guy in Toowoomba. Otherwise, the guards and the body's glass, fibreglass. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That was my next question, actually. What ratio of well, steel with glass? Yep. Um, yeah, so pickup bed and bonnet is, is steel, basically. The rest is, is fibreglass. Jason, I love the material around the roof. What is that? Not sure. As far as I'm aware, they use it on the uh, Mercedes or any high luxury car for all their, on their convertibles on their roof. It's really good. The bugs just wash straight off. And you've done a nice little job out the back in the tray as well. Uh, yeah, in the back. Um, it's timber and I've got a little cut out with a, with a little stainless steel cover where my diff sort of comes up through the, the, the bottom because it's um, slow. And you'll notice there's another perforated mesh in there. That's where my aircon condenser sort of blows all the, the hot air out. So, yeah, it's simple. That, isn't that brilliant? One good thing about these rods is there's just no limit. It's just as You go as far as your imagination does with these hot rods. Yeah, imagination and pockets, how deep your pockets are, I think is, is the big thing. Absolutely. But yeah, Jason, it's awesome here this afternoon in Tamworth, meeting up with some of uh, the hot rod guys here uh, in the town. Mate, thanks for coming along. Uh, no worries, Fletcher. It was a pleasure. Thanks for coming up. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them, and racing. If you're into rods or customs, you'll know what I mean. It's all about passion, purity, and soul. Customs and hot rods like the SoCal Roadster is what we do. And insurance for cars like ours is what Shannon's do. Rods, customs, and even your daily drive. Call Shannon's on 134646. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts like us. And of course, if you own a classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 13. 4646. And don't forget, the Shannon's Club is awaiting you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Moving through as we do in Tamworth. How you doing, Scotty? Good, thanks, Fletch. Yourself? Good, mate. Good. 1934 Dodge. Yeah. This is this is different. It is different, yes. We've uh, took a lot of slack over the years, but not being a forward, but anyhow, <laughs> in, in the uh, earlier days, we did end up putting a forward motor in it, so we re re relented a little bit. The distributor in the back at that angle threw me. I thought, hang on a second, that, that looks like a Y block. Yes, definitely a Y block, a T72 Y block. What are they like for a rev? They don't mind a bit of a rev? They don't mind it at times, yeah. 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 So how long has it been on the road, Scotty? Uh, since 1964, uh, or 65 it was first registered, so that's 56 years now. Wow. Long time. <laughs> I'm just trying to think the last time that I did an interview with somebody where their car has been on the road, or as a, as, especially as a hot rod, as a, as a modified vehicle, for that long. Yes, it's definitely one of the original cars from around. I think there's a second car, or uh, second street rod built in Tamworth, uh, and very few others that, that have been around that long, and to still be in the same family. This car would be like a brother to you, Scotty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was originally built by me, my brother and father yeah. because I was uh, still at school when they did it. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Wow. Well, talk about family heirloom stuff. I, I love this stuff. Now, speaking of which, in terms of uh, how much was done at home back in the day, sometimes homemade dashboards, uh, they can be a bit hit and miss. I've got to say, this car, that's not a bad job. For a homemade dash, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It was all modified to take the the uh, automatic gearbox at the time, which was a, quite a large gearbox. So yeah, we did away with a bit of leg room and pedal room, but and we decided to do away with the old dash and put something more ultra modern. So back in the sixties, when this was done, was it rare, or were a lot of guys, or well not a lot of guys back then, but was it getting done quite often, or, or was this? Uh, would you would you say? Maybe the, the grassroots of uh, where these modified rods started. Yeah, I'd say the grassroots of the street rodding started with these cars. Mm. There's a lot of the guys, even in our club at the time, had modified FJs, FCs, 
Zephyrs and things like that, yeah. but not many actually street rods. Yeah. Because back in the 60s here in Australia, that when you did this car, that was pretty well line ball with the United States because around about that same era, that's when the hot rod boys were really, be, uh, you know, getting into yeah. full swing as well. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's right. Mm. That's why this car is modified. Nearly every, every part of it you look at has been modified. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, the chassis's been modified, the yeah. body's been modified, the rear end's all handmade. Mm. Uh, it's been lowered, it's been chopped, it's been channeled. Yeah. The drive okay? Yeah, drive's not too bad. Yeah. With the, it's got uh, leaf springs all the way around, which makes it a bit harsh to ride, but yeah. Yeah. it still goes all right. Yeah. Good on yeah. You. Good on you. And you have fun with the, uh, the Road Runners Club? I do, yeah. Um, I've been associated with the Road Runners since they formed in 63, but unfortunately in the olden days you had to be 17 to join the club. So I was uh, not able to join for three or four years so but uh, my brother and father were in uh, Gary Chillingsworth uh, they were all the foundation members of the place so good on you Scotty that's awesome and it's also another thanks to uh, to Michael Say the Shannon's representative for uh, Newcastle North and, and Western regions um, opening the doors which then opens other doors uh, you go into a town you find that representative of a car club or of Shannon's representative, and then more doors open. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, uh, it's like a, a domino effect when you do a, a country trip like this, Scotty. It is, yeah. Scotty, thanks again, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Fletch, for coming up and visiting us and yeah. taking an interest in our old hot rod club. It's okay. I'll be back. See you next time. Right Thank you. Cheers, mate. Here we go now. Time for a 1932 Ford Tudor delivery. Wow. What do we say about this, Andrew? Uh... Oh, I love it, mate! This is class. This is uh, this is a hot rod at the next level. Well, glad you said that. Yeah. Well, I've put a lot of time into it, you know, and and uh, it, it was a good thing. It's my first rod I've ever done. I've built cars over the years, but this yeah. is the first one. And well, quit while you're ahead because it's fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Look, and, and not only that, but it rides so damn well. Yeah. Like yeah. it's on full jag suspension, and it's just beautiful to drive on you know yeah well, first thing that pops in the sun obviously is its color it's got a gorgeous interior there with the red now explain the silver what is that okay that's a mercedes-benz brilliant silver before we move into the masterpiece of the interior let's talk about engine up front which way did you go there andrew okay well i kept forward with ford this it's got a uh, early model uh, cleveland 2v 351 Engine looks great there in the engine bay. It sits in the front nicely, mate. Suspension-wise up front, what's the deal there? Okay, well, that's a Rod Tech, uh, one of their stainless steel, fully independent suspensions. Uh, I think they run the Commodore discs on that, if I remember, with a rack and pinion. Yep. Uh, pretty straightforward. They're a very good, uh, easy one once you get them all set up yeah, and yeah. get them uh, wheel aligned. They're, yeah. they're, it just doesn't move. We look at the side profile of this, Andrew, mm -hmm. and the, the sweeping fenders, um, yep. just beautiful over the front wheels. Yeah, yeah, actually. I don't know if you can see it on the guards there, but I've got the, the stainless steel strips. I actually wanted to run that up, up the guards because some of the early cars actually were like that. Yep. But I, it was difficult trying to find some place in Australia that actually made them. And I ended up having to get those strips out of uh, America. And as it was, they were fairly costly, so I had to... Had to do with what I could do with you. Know, good, old, good old US, mate. They're always there for a backstop, <laughs> aren't they? Um, okay, side profile again. We can see where there, where the, the the pressed section there. Um, there was glass there, or was that for manufacture for uh, if glass was going to be an option? It was actually set up as a uh, a uh, Tudor four seater. Yep. It's got the seat belt mounts and everything that were originally in there. Even the window winds were there. Yep. Uh, but I always wanted a. Uh, delivery and because this one was particularly a special made one with the back door yeah. I, I decided I wanted delivery. And now here's the here's a good part about this car the interior this is just wow all day long it's one of these hot rods where you open the door and you just look around the dash the dash that's that to me it's uh, almost like cord you know Dusenberg. Oh yeah I gotta say I like a bit of bling you know, and uh, and I particularly like the dash with the stainless steel, uh, what they call the machine look. Yeah. It's almost cockpit styling, Andrew. It is kind of a little bit like that. Yeah, Fletch, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the back, uh, the section in the floor, uh, yep. the way you went there. Uh, okay, well, it's got a timber floor. It's got the uh, stainless steel strips I made up for it. At the front of the floor and under underneath it, 
is the battery, the wiper motor, the washer bottle, and you put a few tools and stuff in there, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful car. Andrew, again, thank you very much, mate, for uh, for turning up. Uh, mm-hmm. Part of the Tamworth Road Runners, one of the oldest car clubs in Australia. That's something to be very proud of, mate. So uh, thanks yeah. for turning up here this afternoon. Well, it's been a pleasure, Fletch. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, actually. Hi, Peter McLeod, um, Vice President of Tamworth Road Runners. I uh, have been for a couple of years, been a, a member of the club for about five or six years and uh, been involved with the club for about 20 years. Um, the club itself has been going for 57 years, one of very few that have been continuously going for that long. We do a lot for, for the community too. We had a fun drive here when we uh, at our last event um, and too we like to get around the area with uh, rod runs and, and uh, go to a pub. We're actually going to a Bendemere pub tomorrow on a rod run to have lunch and you know, have a couple of lemonades and, and come on back. Being a part of, of, of the uh, Hot Rod Club, I can recommend it for anyone because it's just like being a part of a family, you know. Um, everyone has got the same interests and it's just fantastic. And you meet so many great and nice people. And too, the club doesn't just consist of hot rods. Uh, we've got um, obviously hot rods, tea buckets, uh, American muscle, Australian muscle car. Um, so we've got a good um, variance of cars in the club. Uh, I myself drive a, a, a 94 Corvette, so, which is my uh, pride and joy. And being a uh, you know, committee member and, and, and uh, vice president of the club, I think people should be a part, doesn't matter what sort of club it is, put a smile on your dial and get in and get involved with the community. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos as we make our way up the New England Highway in New South Wales to Tamworth featuring the Powerhouse Motorcycle Museum and of course a few guys from the local Roadrunners Hot Rod Club here in Tamworth. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, no matter where you're watching the show from, until next week please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.